She just, just let me get a guess out. I don't like when she opens her mouth. What? <laughs> okay. that was Turn this camera off. <laughs> Ask the owners if they have any advice for a, a newly market out there and see if somebody could be friendly enough to collaborate instead of compete with you. So focus on the customer service and the experience and you'll stay top no matter what industry you're in. Hey everybody, welcome to During Business Hours. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. We're the husband and wife duo about to give you some advice. Let's get it. Okay, so today we got some emails. We've been collecting them in the last couple of weeks. In the outro, we tell you guys to send in any requests, any concerns about your small or local business, and we'll try and give you some advice on exactly what to do. We've run four businesses so far, six retail locations of sorts, and uh, three online three online businesses. Yeah, I've done pretty well. Most of them, only a few hobbies that didn't get started up into real things, but uh, that's what happens when you got ADHD. Legitimate, I will try and keep the names of the businesses, but the first name, you know, put that on there. So this first one is from Julie, and it says, Hello, uh, I own a small retail pet store, uh, and we've been running for about three years now. Lately, I've been struggling with inventory management, and sometimes we run out of popular items too quickly. And at other times, we overstock. We end up having a discount to discount things just to clear them out. I'm worried this inconsistency is eating into my profits. As someone with 15 years experience, I was hoping you could give me some advice on how to better forecast demand and manage stock levels. Any tools or strategies you found that can help? Looking forward to hearing from your thoughts. Uh, best, Julie. Well, there's plenty of tools out there, I would say. Um, QuickBooks for one, you know, stock management. But I you can always love a good spreadsheet. Excel. Yeah, she is the Excel queen. Um, I think when it comes to pet stores, though, there's things that are seasonal for the most part. Like uh, I mean, Halloween is coming well, up. Oh, yeah, they got the costumes and the things of that nature, but those probably aren't your top sellers, you know. But you think of, like, litters of puppies and kittens. Those are generally certain times of the year. Like, those animals can hunker down any time, but they're going to be more condensed at certain points of the year. I mean, so. We've been spending a lot more time in pet stores because of the... The new little mm -hmm. shitter who likes to sniff around. Hey. Leave it. Leave it. He's getting big. Now, if I was an owner of a pet store, I would think of it just like any other inventory. What is being picked off the shelves the most? And then what is being not picked off the shelves the most? I would try and do a 80-20 split. In my industries, have always been electronics. So I know what the highest demand products are. We'll take cases, for instance. Some cases just don't sell at all, and you stock a bunch thinking they're going to be really hyped or really niche, and everyone's going to love them. The Supreme Louis Vuitton cases that we had 500 of that we overstocked. Or, or those wallet cases that were so hot for a long minute and then just died. But when I moved those to Oklahoma, they sold a lot of them. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh seven eight cases those aren't going to sell let's try it let's just move with them i think we had a whole truckload of accessories that came out oh my gosh don't remind me about the drama with that too though oh the mailing yes now i think for us it's always been spreadsheets those are the best tools because it's free but there's a lot of online tools that'll keep your inventory management i don't know if ad central runs um inventory management like that but you can always get I'd say on Fiverr, there's a lot of people that will do trend analysis for your industry. You can pay somebody $30 and they'll figure out what's currently being purchased online via Amazon, uh, what the top sellers are, and you can always look for those similar or niche products I think, you know, through your distributors and find the options. I think um, depending on who you're using as a point of sale, those generally will have trend analysis too. So if you're... They're costly, though. We used to have a uh, repair shopper, I think it was, mm -hmm. and they had a bit of an analysis on like what the sales prices should have been, what your margins should have been, but it was across 3,000 repair shops, Yeah, and it was askew heavily. So well, I think what's also not a problem, but a problem with a lot of the repair shops is 
you're not like when you go into McDonald's and you order a number two, they're selecting number two inside of their register. And that's how it comes up on the report. Whereas in the repair shop, depending on what you do, that option might not even be available in the list or you're just typing it in with what the price is rather than selecting the option. So the computer is not analyzing it as effectively. As a consumer for pets, I would definitely say the Amazon route and looking at what is the best seller currently. Staying on top of the hot Staying list. on top of the trends. That would be good. Because for me, if I can get it in store compared to Amazon, there was a Mudbuster toy mm -hmm. for the dog I could not get at local stores. And I went to three pet stores, a feed store and two pet stores. And I'm telling you, I would have paid triple to get it that day. So you could yeah. definitely mark those up compared to what I paid on Amazon at $9. You could charge 30 in store. Yeah. So don't be afraid to charge the proper in-store price. It used to be that things needed to be cheaper on hand and then more expensive online. It is not the way things are nowadays. People want convenience. They don't want a good deal. Good deals go online. They'll wait a little longer for it. Now it needs to be on hand immediate. So check that out. Find out what the trends are on the uh, you know online market and see if mm -hmm. you can adapt that for your store. Advertising should always be free. Word of mouth, printed flyers, you know, give somebody a deal, ask them for a review, so on and so forth, and just rinse and repeat, and you'll get your customer base in no time. Let us know in a couple of months how that find how that pans out. Anything else you want to say to Julie? Nope, I think you got it. Okay. <clears throat> so the second one is from Mike. And uh, he specifically wanted me to mention UrbanThreads.com. Uh, he runs a small clothing store, Urban Threads. While I've managed to build a solid customer base locally, my online presence is lacking. I launched an online store last year, but my sales have been uh, disappointing. My social media following is pretty small, and I'm not sure how effectively the market to a wider audience. I'm hoping you can share some insights on how to grow an online business, or whether it's through social media, SEO, or something else entirely. I'd also love to hear about any challenges you faced in taking your own retail businesses online. Ooh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Trying to advertise is a big one because I got banned from Google uh, because I had a business in California that I didn't pay a bill and uh, turned off the credit card. So they were like, anything in your name? I think at one point we had to get the SEO in Leslie's name to get the Google clicks. And so... Finding somebody to run your SEO is the hardest part because you don't want to pay too much because those people always tend to have a lot of people that they will end up having to serve on a daily basis. You want somebody who's going to be in your corner when you need them. And they get you because they give you a deal on that first month and then they're on top of their or game. three months at once. Right. And know. then as soon as that deal's over, it's lackluster. Yeah. And, you know, they'll always do their thing but i would definitely say reddit and twitter are the biggest ways to grow an online audience for a, a business a clothing store run promos um, i think just advertising because as a as a woman good advertising i need something that'll catch the eye a great landing page not a lot of uh text on something that's clothing yeah. it needs to be straight to the point what are you selling how can they get it purchase uh Purchase, incentivize, purchase, incentivize. Just land, 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 and always retain your customer data. Whether it's an email and a name, an email and a phone number, those leads six months down the road. You can run an SMS campaign. Hey, I'm running 25% off for Black Friday. Or like posts of outfits, because I'll see like a one-off on a post, and I'll be like, oh, that's cute, you know, and keep scrolling. And then I see it a week later, and it's exploded, and everybody's trying to get it, or everybody's trying it on. Let me tell you how it really looks this body type that body type so. does this make my hips look big but no hey you can always send us some samples and then let us know and we'll give you some honest feedback and if you ever want somebody to look at the back end of that store and see what your analytics are i'll be happy to do that um but no best of luck let us know in a couple of months how that turns out email three this one is near and dear to my heart because sarah uh runs a small market and uh, it says, subject, help cash flow crisis in year two. 
I could, hi, I could really use some guidance. I opened a, uh, a market, a small organic grocery store about two years ago. The first year went well, but lately I've been experiencing some cash flow issues. There's always enough money coming in to cover our operational costs, but it feels like we're always right on the edge and gets getting stressful. What are some of the strategies you've used in the past to improve your cash flow? I'm thinking about taking a small loan, mm. but I'm hesitant to, hesitant to add more debt. Do you have any advice for improving cash flow without resorting to borrowing? Thanks for your time, Sarah. My first question is how much debt do you already have? Especially for a small business, if you're breaking even covering costs. My first store, I didn't take a loan out until year two, but that was a, like a square loan, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it was 27 grand for 1500 bucks across 18 months. And they took out 12 or 13% at the time daily credit card sales. Back then it was 50%, 50%. We were taking in two grand a day. Mm -hmm. So I was losing $150 per day. So I barely felt that one. Barely felt it. The longer the problem is they get you with those. Mm -hmm. Over time, when you refinance it and refinance it, because it's like, oh, let me get a large oh, lump a sum. Deal. Oh, that's a good deal. And I have business associates that use those, not just Square, but First Data and a bunch of others and mm -hmm. Blockchip, uh, that they use those credit card processor loans. The back end is where they get you because it incentivizes you to keep that, that cash flow. Mm -hmm. So if you're covering your daily expenses, I would cover your... Your, or take a look at your bottom dollar. Find out what you're spending on. Try and, and reduce what, your costs. Or see what what your stock costs versus what you're selling it at. Yeah, you could always raise prices, you know, especially well, with the... kind of inflation, too, but... You could always blame inflation. you got to have a, a margin there that's beneficial for you. Because if, you if you're buying it. apples for, what, a $5 a pound... At the market, they got to be getting it for a dollar or two dollars. They can't be selling it for a dollar profit per pound. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem logical. I don't know why anybody would be you in an organic market. Competition as well to see, like maybe you can get a better deal getting your stock. Yeah, from this guy find out who, where you know. I always say collaborate over compete <clears> because <throat> you could befriend another market or another organic, you know, place and find out where they're getting their stock. And then say, hey, you know, I'm having trouble with my stock or this is how much I cost. Just offer to take them out to, to lunch. You've only been in business two years. They could be in business 10 years doing the exact same thing. And they could mentor you. There is no problem in asking somebody for a little bit of their advice. That should be free every mm -hmm. time. Anytime somebody's like, yeah, sure, I'll charge you for my insider secrets. They're not going to be around long. They never are. That's why all those master classes tend to fail so soon. Oh, my <laughs> the, goodness. Uh, the thing, I, if I was running an organic fresh market, mm -hmm. I would say I'd be at every corner, five five miles in every direction and have family members with um, a folding table selling watermelons or pineapples, offering slight deal wherever they're at compared to my market with flyers for my market or business cards or whatever. Hey, we're going to run this or host a... A flea market once a month so at your I was location. Mention is the farmer markets in town are usually pretty hot spots or yeah. those little events. Try to expand can... into into more avenues like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot you could do um, if that's what if I was into something like that or a partner in one of those, I'd probably start doing that. And then each you know couple of miles and those family members, I'd give them a percentage of whatever they sell, because even though it's not you know it's frowned upon. How many times do those people go to jail? Oh, my goodness. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, keep it moving. Then you move a block, and then you move a block. And if you're selling more product, what does it matter? Right. As long as you're not going to jail for what you're doing, I say try it. Get a slap on the wrist. Hustle apples out there yeah. in the corner. <laughs> Hustle apples. Johnny Appleseed. Bad example. But no, um, try and go to a couple of other markets near you. Ask the owners if they have any advice for a, a newly market out there and see if somebody can be friendly enough to collaborate instead of compete with you. That's what I would do. Or walk in there as a customer and just see what they're doing differently yeah. and if that would take, benefit take you. Take advice from what's presented by those people because you could have an online presence. Sure, you could expand with zero money and offer um, a, to hold an event there. You could join your local chamber of commerce and network. Networking is a big deal in all mm -hmm. business. 
not always the Chamber of Commerce. Some of them are horrible with like 70 year old people that just are there to find, you know, their next date. Uh, Carmichael Chamber of Commerce. Stop it. But it was nothing but 60 and 70 year old men and women finding each other. No. Mm-mm. It was their dating app, modern mm-hmm. day. It was local Tinder without herpes, hopefully. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you know about that? <laughs> um, but Sarah, let us know in a couple of months if you've done that and if it's helped, if it's horrible, send us an email at duringbizhours at gmail.com if you have or have anyone out there has similar uh, stories or questions, concerns about something in your business. Or feedback from one of these people. Yeah, if you've got any, anything, let us know in the comments below if you've got something to help Sarah out or Mike. Or Julie. Yeah, or Julie, and then uh, we'll go from there, and we appreciate your feedback. Uh, the fourth one is from James, and he asked that, uh, you know, it be anonymous. But So he runs a mid-sized tech retail store. Uh, he's been in business for about five years now, but one thing he's consistently struggled with is re- employee retention. Their turnover rate is high. It's affecting not only the team morale, but also customer service. I've tried offering higher wages, but it doesn't seem to be enough. Do you have any suggestions on how to create a work environment where employees want to stay long term? You've been in business a lot longer than me, so I'm sure you've dealt with these challenges. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Very best, James. Now, from our. I'm going to hurt his feelings. Yeah, the stories that we've told on here about our employees, it's a nightmare. Employees are horrible. They will never be your friends. I guess Don't I got, make them your friends. I got both sides of that coin. One, it feels like a lo- everybody wants a job. Nobody wants to work. <laughs> Two, it's also, I'll leave a bad manager fast. I don't care what, what they want to pay me. If you've mm-hmm. got a nasty attitude or you don't know how to run your ship, I'm, I'm bouncing. I used to always say, I hate being the manager. I hate being the owner when it comes to employees because I am there to skirt the system and live my life in a happier manner manner than being the boss employee and like that's the least of my like wants yeah. in a, as a business owner i don't want to run the ship i just want to be in the ship like somebody else can drive the whip whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. i just want to hang out fix stuff go home play with my kids that's it. And get good deals on electronics. Like today, I think, you know, we spent like $40 on $200 worth of phones. And I'm like, sold them yeah, immediately. But I, I think what Great the, deal in the, tech, just saying. I think the biggest things when it comes to employees is, one, you've got to look at how you're doing your interviews. How you're like weeding out who's bad and who's good. Are you catching the actual bad apples at the start? And then if if everything's good in that nature, then to hurt his feelings, it's probably you. Yeah. Well, I found out it was me after my first five hires. Yeah, because you've told me some stories, and I was like, oh, I'd hate you. (laughs) I hired a customer, yeah, and then that customer had a girlfriend. I hired her. Great, you know, duo at first. And then it was, oh, you guys should move in across the way from me. And then it was like, oh, you know. Too friendly. Too friendly. Too friendly. It was like Christmas parties, waking up, hanging out, boom, here we go, go to work. And then when they falter, you're like, hey, I got to be a boss at the times where it's hard that's the problem. Don't be friends with your employees. You will get robbed of tens of thousands of dollars like I did in recent years and then have to fire everyone you knew from high school. Yeah. Because that's happened. Refer to this video. I mean, even not as a business owner, even as an employee, you just got to be, your coworkers are not your friends. Very Mm -hmm. seldom. Draw that line hard in the sand. I have a, three girls that I'm genuinely friends with outside Mm -hmm. of work and half of them are no longer with the company anyways. But even the corporate world is nasty. Like I'm, I'm not on the top of the food chain in my uh, other job, but I can't go to work and be like, Oh yeah, we went out to Applebee's last night and had a drink Mm -hmm. because by the end of the day, I'm now an alcoholic. (laughs) I, I would say I run this store in Oklahoma a bit different because I only have one employee right now. And I, I try to get, as minimum amount of work out of this store as I can. I personally am there as what less than 20 hours a week. I maintain just some of the superficial soldering jobs, so on and so forth. And it does, you know, r- roughly around 20 revenue uh, a month. Mm-hmm. And that's great. He gets paid what he wants. 
He gets enough free time. He can request time off. He's got the king, keys to the kingdom, which everyone tends to fuck up. This one, I think, is a little more steady-minded about, like, this is an opportunity he's never had from a small town. It, it's a lot more freeing. I would say give people a goal and then stick to that expectation. The one thing I never did with a lot of my managers was give them, hey, we're going to have a review. We're going to make sure that you're paid this by this time. This is your goal to set to because everything changes, inflation, etc. I tried to stay there when I paid somebody 19, 20, 21 dollars an hour at the high point. I was like, this is all you're getting. And I made it very clear. I was like, I'm going to pay you the most up front and you can milk it for as long as possible, but there's always an expiration date. That milk will sour. So I knew that I was not in the right for that, but I made it very clear because I didn't want to give people the wrong impression. And so some people got uh, cuts of profit. Some people got profit shares. Some people got uh, 1099s. Depends on, and especially wherever you're advertising for your employment. Is it Indeed? Is it job fairs? Are you looking for somebody with no experience, a lot of experience? What's the pay rate? Because you didn't say where the store was. I didn't Google it. Sorry. Um, I should Google. Did he say? I didn't catch a, he said mid-sized retail tech something. I don't think he gave a location. Atlanta. Affordable. So what's the minimum wage in Atlanta? Seven twenty-five an hour. Federal minimum wage. Oh, that's federal. That's across the board. Uh, employees under 20 are paid a special minimum wage at four twenty-five per hour during the first 90 days of employment. Ooh. Yikes. Double that up. I would double that minimum, especially in, in some electronics. You can sell a cell phone, make $200 in profit, especially if you give them commission-based, like 1% to 3%. Typical should be starting 1% and then earn at their points, like I said, set goals and boundaries. Uh, we're next to an AT&T that is strictly commissions, and then they took the commissions away and made them all salary. And their salaries are atrocious, atrocious. for 40-hour work weeks. Most of them quit. And so, the, similarly, another Verizon down the road from us quit as well. All of them. They, yeah. they just locked up shop one day, threw the keys on the ground, and left. Yep. I remember it's sad. my business. I, I would look into Indeed and see about building a better uh, resume request and, and more try to narrow the type of employees and then set your goals for the employees. What do you want from them at three months, six months, and nine months before you even hire them? And then tell them in the interview, this is what I'm looking for. This and is what I expect. This is what I expect. And set those st- so stupid clear. proof ground rules. And then you can be friendly with them. But do not answer any calls after hours or make any calls after hours. Like you are on a different you know, time mm-hmm. scale. Let us know in a couple of months if you, you know. How that pans out. How that pans out. Or if you need any more help, you can always email us directly at DuringBizHours at gmail.com. Also, by the way, uh, one more thing to add. People are going to quit. Nobody is going to work for you forever because it is not their, it's not their business. It's not a retirement, especially small retail electronic. I don't think anybody's going to retire from me ever unless I give them some type of profit share or, you know, ownership stake. Yeah, nobody's going to care about your business like you do. Got to remember that. And then the final email that I picked was from Allison. Uh, she owns a small bookstore. And uh, it says, hi, I'm facing a major challenge with my independent bookstore. Uh, we've been doing well for years, but a big chain bookstore just opened up a few blocks away, Barnes & Nobles. I've already noticed a dip in foot traffic and sales. Feels like the odds are stacked against us, and I'm really worried about the long-term impact. Have you ever dealt with a similar situation in your years of running businesses? What strategies would you suggest to stay competitive and keep my loyal customers coming back? I'm really hoping your experience can help us guide us through this time. Uh, warm regards, Allison and John. These, uh, I guess it's husband and wife team uh increase your romance section (laughs) there's a big hype on the romance and the the book talk right now i would definitely say get on social media for like books you offer that are more hardback and lean into that because i see a lot of stores that are you know showing the 
the variety of mm-hmm. what the books are. And I'm like, man, I really want to go to the bookstore. I keep seeing that. And Barnes & Noble is doing great on that. You could always do that. It drives up the SEO. Uh, Google advertising, try and get more, of you know, foots in the door. I just love the idea of throwing events at small businesses. You know, it drives so many eyes directly to your storefront. And it's free. I've seen also, I think this is really interesting. I I don't frequent bookstores, Mm -hmm. so I don't know if this is commonplace, but I've seen a couple of ads for some like small town bookstores that are doing book clubs on certain days. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to get people in the door. That's super interesting. Also trying to get after hour programs to be held there for school. Mm -hmm. I've seen that where people get contracts from special education programs or like studying uh, for term test, midterms, et cetera. Or even doing the fundraisers yeah. through, the, through the school. And so they'll have placements where kids can come or like safe spaces, depending on where that store is. You can always offer a safe space to your local community to be um, chaperoned, safety, you know, indoors. Or you can uh, work directly with the PTA, offer some type of discount for rental time or hey we're gonna you know allow even boy scouts always look for a place to have their meetings yeah so you could always look for that and say that you offer some type of space similar to how uh comic book stores started doing card rooms where they Mm -hmm. could play magic etc and you rent the space to those players the other thing i would say again network big time uh, collaborate, don't compete, look for other store owners, people on Reddit, Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, stock is a big thing for bookstore owners. I know that having more of certain series can be of demand and always have more than just the first of something because then people get really upset and they move to online. Um, that's, that's where I'm bad. I'm all my books are online. <laughs> exactly. Same, but you know, Hey, Send us some info, and if you're local, we'll check you out. We do need to get some <laughs> hard copy books, sir. Yeah, the I used to have a lot, and then we had kids, and now I. We have these bookshelves that have everything but books on them. A lot of mine was self improvements, like uh, what a woman want. Uh, you know how to basically say oh f your life. Um, from I got a funny little antidote. I, this was like 15, 20 years ago. I have not forgotten it, and I'm still mad. All right, hang on to that. The aspect of somebody opening up across the street or down the road. I once had a Boost Mobile store that opened up where we were at in Carmichael um, on the corner mm-hmm. across from us, where there's now a pizza shop and bar. Or Boost Mobile is not there anymore, but they were offering repairs and service. We didn't Mm -hmm. offer service. I was like, oh, well, I'm dead in the water. Sat there at 11 p.m. staring in their window like they're really doing this. Tried calling the number the next day. I was just before my collaboration over competition idea and how I uh, fed into that. I was still a petty, newly business owner. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how can I shut this down? And then I realized I couldn't. The guy was absolutely a dick. Um, his The way he ran his business spoke for itself. We had a small dip for a short time, but it was more like, hey, check them out first if you want to. But we lent into it. Like, hey, when you're done there, you come here and I'll offer you $10 off. Whatever their quote is. So I undercut them. It worked for a bit. But I think our customer service held up to where we stopped offering that discount and kept the customer service and the experience better than what they could provide. So focus on the customer service and the experience and you'll stay top no matter what industry you're in. So um, I recently started saying in our business here in Oklahoma that we're the grandchildren for hire because it seems like. 35%, I would say, of our customers are people over 60. And a lot of them transfer new phones from the carriers around us. Around us. A lot of them have little simple things that they're just... Signed out of Facebook. I'm signed out of Gmail. So we charge for that. But we make damn good money and we offer an experience. There's chairs. There's water. You all right? You need a conversation about a bad day? We'll hear it. But that's the experience. The customer What's service. What's your husband do this time, ma'am? Yeah. Or if she comes in and she's, I hate 
the idea of a woman that's 75 walking in with a cane that can't barely walk, so I'll walk them out. Yeah. And I've been praised. And I'm like, well, that's just the gentleman thing to do is like, yeah. let me help this lady do her car. The experience for a lot of these customers, they will sing your praises for longer than an advertisement uh, will be ran. She's going to go home and tell her buddies and they're just going to be. And her real grandchildren. And they'll be like, oh, they helped. Okay. Da, 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 da. And then when their Christmas card is a little light and it's going to be like, this one went to the local love family, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They'll or like, they'll remember us when their phone breaks or their kids break a tablet. And then they're like, hey, you help, you help my grandma. Yeah. And it took, I think, three months for Boost Mobile to stop offering repairs because they got sued over, you know, a small issue that turned to a big issue. That, But they weren't offering the same things we were. And to this day, we still offer more than most, uh, I'd say, 80% of repair shops do. So I think you're soldering really not Soldering, the back glass, mm -hmm. the customer service, the, hey, let me drive to pick it up, out of my way things. stuff. Like I picked up an Xbox from Enid this morning, dropped it off, same day service. Because I go to Woodward from Enid and back. That's 200 miles. 200 miles of travel. Yeah. Like, damn. That, that's a lot. And people are like, oh, my God, I can't believe you do that. It's the customer service. They'll tell five more people, so on and so forth. So be better in the expectation. Be better in the delivery. And then advertise in all the free ways that we discussed before. Or you could just collaborate with them and say, hey, if they're uh, not Barnes and Nobles, if they're another bookstore like yours, why not share? Hey, we can all be find out what they're doing better than you, and then try to implement it in your own way with a twist. Family, homegrown, bookstore, leather with a sense of love, you know, or what is it? Uh, paperback with a sense of love. There you go. Back to my funny yeah. little antidote, real quick. Yeah. Oh, this one time I walked into um, <clears throat> a Barnes and Noble with my friend Kirsten. And Did you walk out with a lot of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I go, you walk in and like 10 feet ahead is one of those little help desks. It's just a circular desk mm -hmm. where there's a worker that can direct you or provide information about whatever. I always felt like those were like the 1930s uh mall stores that mm -hmm. they had where it was just like there's one info desk and where you purchase everything right and it was just uh, that's what barnes and nobles reminded me of so when we walk when we got into barnes and noble we had one mission in mind as a particular set of books we were looking to find it like we knew when walking in what we were going to get and we were walking out right so I walk in there, and I'd never been in this Barnes & Noble before, so I walk straight up to that desk, and I'm like, excuse me, can you tell me where the self-help section is? She looks at me, and she's like, well, I could tell you, but that would kind of defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm still mad. Customer service experience that goes hand-in-hand -hand with hire well, with what you're offering, stock and inventory, and don't hire dumb people. All of it in that one experience could have saved them. Because I'm pretty sure from that point on, you didn't give two shits about the employees. When I was a kid, we all stole from Barnes and Nobles. And it's. When are you gonna still, I guess they have albums and CDs and stuff. Yeah, like we also. didn't go for the CDs because those had the, the magnets, mm -hmm. those had the, the security and the almost like. Stealing magic and DD? &D? Yeah, DD &D books. So mm -hmm. I would steal DD &D books or fun game, board games, et cetera. And I would take. All of them shove them in my because you could sit there and read them and use them, but I would shove all the new ones in my box yeah. in my bag, and then um, in my backpack I had a zipper on the inside, so I'd take like five or six magic uh, what was it D and D books that were big, oh my and God. stick them in the back, and then my food and everything was in there. So when we'd walk out and security would be like, huh, because we'd go in with a pizza box. And there I, was so much more room for the board games and everything else. We would take all this shit down to oh our local comic gosh. book store and sell them because they were $80 in the store at Barnes & Nobles. So I'd sell them to A1 or Adventures Comics. They're going to come and get you for with No, it's wait, 20 years ago. Uh, for $35 a piece. And I'm 13, 14 here. And that's like $300 we got. So oh, then we started doing it. I was balling like you couldn't give me a lollipop and 500 bucks like no no it's not enough money oh my god it's not enough 
I really liked that Barnes and Noble though, like especially when they got the Starbucks connected to it, so you could grab your coffee and then immediately walk in and sit down with your little book. Or you could return the things you stole and get a Starbucks oh gift card. Gosh. I was horrible as a we've all had, I was a horrible kid. I've learned from my mistakes. Served in the army. It, you know, I learned the difference between being a shitty person and a good person in between my. 17 to 22 year you know sentence um not jail but it is the military life comes fast if i didn't do those really shitty things as a kid i wouldn't be the the person that's constantly trying to find a way around problems today because there's always a solution i found that when i was a kid yeah and i've honed it now that no matter what problem your business is going through there is always a solution. So if you just think there's a silver lining immediately, then somebody steals from you. Say you've got three grand in the bank for your business and rent's coming up and it's 2,500 bucks and somebody steals from you, check goes through 2,500 you got nothing. And you're like, what am I going to do? I got five days still rent. I'd immediately think, okay, we're shutting down in five days. I've got five days to sell as much as I can and get out of here scot-free. We're jumping ship. In my mindset, I'm going to hustle for the next five days and make all that money plus more. And then I'm going to be like, oh, well, now I got a decision. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing ever happened. Wait, just go back to work and keep doing the same thing. And I did that so many times where something bad would happen and I'd face it head on immediately. Worst case decision. Okay, we got this letter from the state says that we don't have a license. It's going to be a fine of 200. We may be shut down for seven to 10 days, blah, blah, pending. And then be like, all right, we're getting shut down. Boom. Work hard now. And then as soon as we file it, boom, they're like, oh, sorry, it didn't have to be like that. It was just a simple application. Boom, $45. Oh, my goodness. It's always a slap on the wrist for the I think small mindset plays owner. a lot for, and into a lot of problems, though. Like, obviously, just being like, oh, everything's going to be okay. Isn't I don't think it's gonna all going to be okay. I think gonna it's going to be, okay. be horrible always. I go to the worst kid. Kids got a cold. They're dying. How do we stop them from yeah, dying? Yeah, exactly. So, like, okay, what can I throw this at? Kitchen sink. But that's what I, that, I mean. That's still, it's not the positivist mindset, but it's not negative. It's not like you, oh, they're dying and you just came to terms with now. Oh, no, no. Dead. I just, I, I want to get that you know. fear of like, that holds you back. You know what I mean? That fear that keeps you crippled mm -hmm. in a bad situation. I don't, I don't feel that. I get that overwhelming, take a deep breath. Kind of like oh, a fight or flight. Yeah, thing. fight or flight thing, and then Sink I just fight. Swim. Exactly. So I start swimming. And every time. I just accept that the bad thing is happening. Now we got to fight through it. Right. That's a great mindset to have, but you got to challenge yourself. You have to have had some challenges. So for everyone who's emailing, I know you're going through things. It's a bad, we're going to say economy right now, that times are tough in different ways for everybody. But reach out. There's always somebody who's been through things, knows things, haven't has answers to the things because they've been through it before. I may not have every answer, but I'm willing to give you the answers I got or the recommendations that we come up with. So let us know during business during biz hours at gmail.com and then we'll let you know. Anything else you want to add, love? Nope. I think it's been a good one. We appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know how you feel about it, and then we'll do more of these in the future. See you later. Life can be super happy. Life can be super sad. I'm trying super hard to separate the good and bad. I go back to my future just to get to my past. But knowing me, my DeLorean will